One way to identify trends and seasonality more easily is to present the data graphically rather than in tables. To do so, click on the Graph tab. The first chart that appears after you have clicked on the Graph tab is the curve chart on imported value by country on a monthly basis. That is exactly the same information as was presented in the table. There is also the option to change to a bar graph by scrolling down the graph menu. But since this is probably not the easiest chart to interpret, we will focus on the curve chart first. To make it easier to spot the trends and seasonality, it is best to select quarterly time series and include a longer period in the graph. To do this, you just select the initial and the final period to be included in the chart by selecting in the combo boxes the appropriate periods. Just remember to always click on the update button to refresh the graph. In this case, we have included the period starting in the first quarter of 2004 and ending in the first quarter of 2019. Now you can appreciate the fluctuations among all these periods and see how most of the countries behaved in a similar way until 2012. After that, we can see that Vietnam in red and India in grey started to have more share of the market as important competitors by growing or keeping their imported value, while imported value from Brazil has decreased ever since that year. More recently, Uganda in blue is showing more participations in this market. Once you have prepared this chart, you save or print it so you can use it in a report. By the way, all the data produced by ITC is publicly available, so you may use it for any analytical purpose, including research and publication, as long as you acknowledge ITC as a source with a reference to the market analysis tools. You can also use the Graph tab to present other types of data and carry out different analyses. For instance, should you want to identify alternative suppliers of coffee for Italy, you can do so by going to the Product menu and scrolling up to select again 090111 Coffee excluding roasted and decaffeinated, and then switching the data type back from quarterly time series to trade indicators. This will change the chart from the curve on imports by country to another one, which presents the prospects for diversification of suppliers for the selected product imported into Italy in 2018. This is a bubble chart, and it is widely used due to its ability to present a large volume of information in one single chart. To better analyse and identify alternative suppliers of coffee for Italy, we will see the bubble chart from the world exporter's perspective. To do so, we need to select world in the country field. Choose exports and select the second option in the drop-down menu. Bubble graph on concentration versus distance. This new chart is titled Concentration of exporting countries and average distance with destination countries for the selected product in 2018. Specifically, this chart is presenting four variables. The vertical axis presents the average distance with destination countries in kilometers, which is to say how far the exporting country is sending its product comparing to other exporters. For instance, we can note that Brazil is exporting its coffee to partners located in far regions, while Belgium seems to be exporting mainly to European neighbors given small average distance. In other words, the higher the bubble is located, the farthest its products are reaching around the globe. The horizontal axis presents the concentration of exporting countries. Thus, the further to the right the bubble is located, the more concentrated is the market. Using Belgium again as an example, we note per its position that it is the most concentrated exporting market, probably because it might be exporting just to a small number of countries in its region. The size of the bubble identifies the exported value of the country for the selected product. Therefore, the biggest bubble, Brazil, represents the biggest exporter of the selected product to the world. 
The color of the bubble, finally, identifies whether a given country has a positive or negative trade balance for the selected product. The yellow color indicates a country has a negative trade balance, hence it is a net importer for the product. For example, Belgium, the United States and Germany are the only three countries among the top 20 exporters in the world that are actually importing more of the product than what they export. The blue color means that a country has a positive trade balance, being a net exporter of the product. The vast majority of the exporters for this product has a positive trade balance as we can tell by the blue color bubbles. Note that you can place your mouse over any bubble and it will give you the data for the corresponding country. For example, we can see that the bubble for Honduras has a relatively good size, representing an important participation in world trade for this product. It has an average distance of almost 8,000 kilometers, as can be perceived by being located toward the upper side of the table. Honduras has a concentration of 0.13, among the lowest if we compare its position in the left side of the graph versus other exporters. Finally, we see that the exported value for Honduras is 1.1 billion US dollars. The fact that the country is exporting to diversified partners far from its region might suggest that this is a prospect alternative supplier for Italy. This type of analysis can be applied to other combinations of variables. You can go to the menu under the Graph tab and choose another graph for further analytical purposes. Another mechanism to facilitate data analysis graphically is to present that data in a map, hence the name of TradeMap. If you click on the Map tab this time, TradeMap will generate a map where the countries are colored according to their share in world exports of coffee, excluding roasted and decaffeinated. Looking at the map, we note that Brazil, Vietnam and Colombia, all colored in red, are the top exporters of coffee in the world, with each country exporting more than 2.1 billion US dollars in value, as the color suggests. To better analyze the map features, Let's select again Italy as an importer country. To do so, you just need to select Italy again in the country field and choose Imports. The new map presents countries coloured according to the share each of them holds in Italy's imports of coffee, excluding roasted and decaffeinated. This map visualises again what we have seen before that supply to the Italian market is not concentrated. This is because there is no country in red, which means there is no country with a market share greater than 50%. Brazil is the only country colored orange, representing between 20 and 50% of market share. Then we have Vietnam and India colored yellow, representing between 10 and 20% of market share. Following, the only one in green is Uganda, representing between 5 and 10%. We can find a good number of countries in blue, with a market share between 1 and 5%, including Colombia, Indonesia, Peru, Ethiopia, among many others. Furthermore, there are some other countries in purple, with a market share of 0 to 1%. You can also select all countries and not one specific partner. To obtain a map that shows which countries are the largest importers of coffee, excluding roasted and decaffeinated, in the world. Here we can see that the countries which import the selected code for coffee with a value of 441 million US dollars or more are all developed countries.